In this video, we look at the idea of the lowest common denominator. Sometimes when we obtain a common denominator to add and subtract fractions, we get quite large or messy denominators, or things that are numbers that are a bit big to, diff to deal with easily. So for example, if we're given 3 on 12 plus 13 on 48, the simplest thing to do would be to multiply the first fraction by 48 on 48, and the second fraction by 12 on 12. But as you can see, we end up with quite large numbers here on the denominator, not too easy to deal with in our heads, and numbers that are a bit messy to work with. When we introduce algebra and variables, it gets even worse again. So to avoid such problems, we can use what's called the lowest common denominator. That'll allow us to still get a common denominator for our fractions to be added and subtracted, but it won't be as big and messy and hard to deal with. The lowest common denominator is just a denominator that has the lowest common multiple of the denominators in the sum or difference. So figuring out what the lowest common denominator is is not too tricky. The first thing we need to do though is to factor each denominator into its prime factors. Once we have that, for each prime factor that appears in the fractions, we find what its highest power is. Finally, we can form the lowest co common denominator as the product of the highest power of each prime factor. Then when we want to add and subtract fractions using that lowest common denominator, what we need to do of course first of all is find it, but then we multiply the top and the bottom of each fraction in our sum or difference by whatever we need to in order to change the original denominator into the lowest common denominator. Remembering that any quantity over itself is equal to 1, that means we won't change the value of our fractions, just what they look like. Finally, we can add and subtract the numerators and place them over the common denominator. So let's consider an example, 3 on 4xy cubed plus 5 on 8x squared y. Here we've got 4xy cubed and 8x squared y as the denominators of our two fractions. Now the lowest common multiple of 4 and 8 is 8, and the other factors that we have here are x and y, and their highest powers are x squared and y cubed. So to form the lowest common denominator, we multiply the first fraction by 2x on 2x, and the second fraction by y squared on y squared. This will give us a common denominator of 8 over x squared y cubed. So let's look at that in the addition. We're going to have 3 over 4xy cubed multiplied by 2x on 2x plus 5 on 8x squared y times y squared on y squared. Now got our common denominator of 8x squared y cubed and on the top we have 6x plus 5y squared. You could have a look and see if there's any common uh, way that you could factor the top and get common factors, but I'm pretty sure that that's as low as this one's going to go. So we've completed our addition of the original two fractions. Let's have a look at simplifying this expression by first finding the lowest common denominator. Maybe pause the video now, jump back to this slide and follow through the process yourself, then come back through and work through it with me. Okay, so the prime factors in our denominators here are going to be 2, 3, x, and y. And the highest powers of those variables is just going to be x squared. The highest power of all the rest is just their first power. So our lowest common denominator is going to be the product of those values, 2 by 3 by x squared by y, or 6x squared y. Now we need to multiply each of our fractions by whatever it takes, top and bottom, to give us that lowest common denominator. So we have 5 on 2x squared will need to be multiplied by 3 and y to give us the common denominator. So we have times 3y over 3y. Then 2 on 3xy needs to be multiplied by an x and a 2, so 2x on 2x. This gives us a common denominator of 6x squared y, and on the top we have 15y plus 4x. And again, this can't be reduced any further than it is at the moment. 
How about this one? We've got a longer expression this time with a lot more factors in it. Have a go yourself now finding the lowest common denominator and then carry out the addition and the subtraction to simplify the expression. Okay, in this example we can see that the denominators have factors of 3, x, y, z, and z plus 1 in brackets. We need to get the highest powers to which all of those numbers appear and use that to form our lowest common denominator. In terms of the constants, we're going to need a 9. We're also going to need x squared, y to the fourth, a z, and a z plus 1. It's important to note that z and z plus 1 in brackets are actually different factors. We need to deal with them both. Now we need to multiply our quantities by whatever it takes, top and bottom, to get that common denominator. So for the first one, 5 on 3 x y to the 4 z, we're going to have to multiply by a 3. We've already got x, but we need another x to get x squared. y to the 4 is already catered for, as is z, but we need a z plus 1 in brackets. And we do that top and bottom so that we're not actually changing the value. Next we have 8 on 9xy cubed, and we need to multiply by an x, 1y, a z, and a z plus 1. And we do that top and bottom again. Finally, plus 7 on 3x squared y, z plus 1. This one's got a lot more of the factors from the lowest common denominator, so we only need to multiply by 3, y cubed, and z, top and bottom. Okay, so I've just copied that down from the previous slide. It's exactly the same here as it was on the previous. I'm going to write everything now over the common denominator, which you might remember was 9x squared y to the 4, z, and z plus 1 in brackets. On the top, we're going to have 15x times z plus 1, take away 8, x, y, z, z plus 1, and finally plus 7 by 3 will give us 21, y cubed, and z. And again, what we'll find is we don't have any common factors up the top here to pull out, and we've got our lowest form, or our combined form, for our original expression, with the addition and the subtraction carried out written over a common denominator. Okay, so in this video we've seen that sometimes denominators get messy when we're adding and subtracting fractions, and one way to make them slightly less messy, although the last example got a little bit messy anyway, was to define what we call a lowest common denominator. We use that lowest common denominator then to add and subtract the fractions.